Yeah, hello and welcome to our next webinar, KNX webinar with the topic KNX Security Panel, GM slash A 8.1. Yeah, uh, my name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel, and as always, I conduct this webinar together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, who is sitting next to me, and we will share this webinar. So I will start with some introduction slides about this topic, uh, KNX Security Panel, um, and Jürgen will follow later on uh, with the programming together with a web interface, so you will get a good overview of the solution and the technology behind. Good. Um, if you want, you can give us some questions also during the webinar in the chat room. As always, we try to answer this uh, directly at the end of the webinar. Um, if not possible, um, we will send you an answer in our feedback email, which will be sent always to you after the webinar, which contains uh, yeah the, the presentation, but also the recorded file, uh, recorded video of the webinar. Good. Um, after the webinar, you will uh, guide it to a questionnaire for questions around this topic. So please answer these questions um, to complete the webinar. If you are not able to do this right now, you can do it also later and we will send you also a reminder. Good. Allow me to switch off the video to improve the performance of the system here. But you can listen, of course, to me and see every slide right now. Okay, so let's start. KNX Security Panel GM slash A 8.1. So, KNX is a topic, of course. Based on KNX, we have a lot of solutions, as you know, uh, in, in, in terms of home and building automation. And our target, of course, is to combine both security and KNX, which we did already in the past. It's nothing completely new. What we are offering right now is a next level of integration, uh, next level of performance regarding security, um, and of course also again integration into KNX. Though you will see it's not uh, absolutely necessary, we have also a kind of standalone solution with some more options, uh, but of course our target is to integrate as much as possible with KNX. So everything in one system, so you can use partly uh, sensors uh, in a double way for yeah, uh, classical home and building automation functions, but also for security functions. Or a touch panel can be used also for, for setting and unsetting the alarm system. Things like these are possible. Yeah, let's go directly into yeah um, the middle of the, the system, let's say. But before we do this, we have here um, an overview of our history. I don't want to go into details, but we started already 30 years ago with our security solutions. Uh, then we followed with integration of KNX and um, now we come to this new security panel, GMA-8, um, which you can see here already, um, which is a box first of all, a white box with some content of course, with something inside. And what is inside we will see on the next slide. First of all, the main part, the brain, which is yeah, the principal, uh, the main platine, completely covered here by, by a housing with a lot of connection terminals. Yeah. We come to the details here a bit later, but an overview I would like to give you right now. Um, first of all, we have an Ethernet connection available. Ethernet connection down there to connect yeah, any PC, for example, via wireless LAN, also a tablet PC, yeah, for programming of the solution, but also for operation. We will see later on. We have also inputs for directly connecting uh, any inputs, uh, any sensors, sorry, uh, for example, a motion detector, a window contact with a contact behind. And uh, allow me to take this pointer here. And um, yeah, any conventional contact can be linked here. Furthermore, we can connect sp special keypads, you will see later on. And also for alarming, uh, are uh, connections available? First of all, for any internal siren, for external siren or flashlight, but also for remote alarming via telephone. We have some options. Yeah. So then we have a security bus, which is not completely new, already existing uh, in our former solutions. But you will see later on what can be connected there. And last but not least, of course, KNX. At the further interface, you can see it here. It's a yeah, connection terminal showing you that there is a KNX connection directly available. Yeah, and now a more complete overview of the solution. Um, in the middle here, our component, which is a box, a white box, including this platine, 
completely uh, in a housing with the connection terminals and so on. We have uh, seen uh, in the former slide. Plus batteries. For a powerful security solution, you need uh, buffer batteries. And this can be installed directly here inside the box. And on the left, we see yeah, two zone modules and principal components to connect additional contacts, sensors with contacts behind. Yeah. So, but first of all, I can connect directly my sensors to the eight inputs, eight zone inputs I have directly here at the device. A zone is more or less a group of, of sensors you would like to, to detect together. Uh, so it's not normally not only one sensor, but a group of sensors. Uh, so eight zones directly and further eight zones via these integrated or integratable zone modules, yeah, which is possible directly here in, in the component. Um, main outputs are for alarming. I mentioned already Serene flashlight, but we have also directly an analog output for the analog telephone available. Means this allows us to connect directly in an analog telephone network to send out any yeah, remote alarms like a voice message, like an SMS, for example. And also email is possible. So you need no other component here. Um, yeah, what else do we have as connections? The security bus, which is an ABB yeah, bus solution in, with our own protocol to connect different further components. So the security bus will be yeah, installed in the rooms, going to the rooms wherever you need anything to be connected. And first of all, you could connect further zone modules, again with four inputs to connect your conventional sensors. You can connect bus motion detectors we have in our range, um, yeah, to have directly connection here without any zone module, it's available. And to connect our safe key setting devices. These are components to set and unset an alarm system, but also to get access to a building. You see here, uh, a version with a, a turnable knob means you can install it directly on the on the main entrance, for example, and also open the door, but also setting it, uh, set and unset the alarm system. Yeah. So this bus can go through the building to connect more of these components instead directly here at the device. Another bus is a keypad bus. It's separated from a security bus to connect these keypads. I will show you on the next slide what's behind. In principle, it's for operation, but uh, also for displaying any status. So it's for the end user to, to operate the system. Up to five of these keypads can be connected to one solution here. Yeah, and here you see the LAN connection, Ethernet connection, to connect any PC via LAN cable, for example, LAN cable. But if you have a wireless LAN access point, it's also possible uh, via wireless LAN. Yeah. And this allows you to completely program, commission the solution, but also to operate uh, and display status information. So you will see it's a very user-friendly and uh, yeah, state-of-the-art solution, let's say. Yeah, and last but not least, KNX, of course, as a connection. Yeah. You see here some further KNX devices for the classical uh, functions in the building. But of course, you could also connect our KNX security terminals, yeah, a bit similar to the zone modules, to connect conventional sensors, to integrate these alarm sensors via KNX into your complete solution. Communication on KNX can be in both directions, yeah, if you want. So actively, KNX can take part in the complete, complete solution. Yeah, or due to special situations, it's not allowed to communicate from KNX to the alarm, uh, KNX alarm pa security panel. You can block this as well. And you can say, okay, only communication from uh, the KNX security panel to KNX. Uh, just to show or to, to show some, yeah, some status information here on the touch panel, for example. Uh, but it's not an active part of the security solution. Uh, furthermore, you can uh, completely block the communication if necessary or if you don't want to use anything here or you don't connect anything is also of course possible. Yeah? So it's, it runs also without KNX. Yeah? It's only a further option but I think uh, well, we think that most of the projects will of course integrate KNX here. Yeah? But Jürgen will show you later on the options in the sof software how to adjust the uh, communication with KNX. So we go with our new solution one level higher. The former solution we still have are completely based on KNX, 
but here you can run this as a standalone solution with many more functions we will see later on. Um, it will be also approved uh, regarding EN and e uh, IEC uh, rules uh, solution later on, but we come to this. So it's the next level and state of the R solution for security uh, panel plus integration of KNX. And this is something unique, nobody else has such a solution on the market, so it's a real ABB unique uh, product on solution. Yeah, how many of these zones can be integrated? First of all, remember eight onboard zones. It's a component itself. I can connect up to 64 bus motion detectors. Yeah. I can connect up to 32 zone modules. Remember, each has four zones possible, so 128. Eight safe key modules can be connected. And via KNX, um, I can link up to 128 further zones. We are security terminals, for example. So the theoretical total number of zones is 344, which is a lot, of course. But at the moment, you have to accept that depending on the yeah, components you use here, depending on the uh, number of motion, bus motion detectors or zone modules, you cannot connect the total number of zones to the security bus at the moment, maybe. It depends on the situation, on the cable length, cross section. Um, and on the number of components, but at the moment we have 800 milliampere available and each device connected as a security bus needs some current, of course, uh, but practically it will be more than enough for the projects we would like to, to implement with this solution. And security panel is mainly for yeah high-level residential projects or residential projects at all, also smaller or medium-sized commercial projects, and there this should be normally enough. Yeah. Good, Look, let's have a look to the keypad. Remember, up to five of these keypads can be connected to security, sorry, to the keypad bus, the security bus, it's a separate wiring. Yeah, and it's used for operating uh, the system for the end user, but also displaying some status information. Yeah? So we have different keys, uh, uh, which are partly also programmable. First of all, here you see uh, a number key, number keys from zero to nine for uh, yeah, uh, typing in any, any PIN code if necessary. For safety relevant functions you need a PIN code. Yeah. We have here four buttons um, which can be freely programmed. Um, if, if you look at the display here, it's a screenshot you see here. The first two um, yeah, icons uh, already visible. For example, this one allows you to, to deactivate uh, a zone, for example. But it's freely programmable. You see here two other buttons, set and unset. Yeah, could be used for internal setting or external setting, for example. But it's easily detectable what is what's behind, and the user can directly press a button here without clicking through any any menus here uh, on the on any panel. Uh, so the main functions should be easily accessible for the user here, but also here on these four programmable buttons. Yeah. So a reset is something you need, for example. Yeah or jumping to the menu means to further information about the status in your system. Yeah. Good. Yeah, what else um, we can say to this uh, pad? You see it's a monochrome uh, keypad, for example, here, and some information directly in the keypad in the middle of this uh, a touch and a touch uh, TFT uh, screen. Also, date and time will be shown here. You see the system is at the moment unset, this symbol shows it to you, ready to set, so you can directly press a button to, to set your system. Um, yeah. Commissioning, already mentioned a bit, we need uh, any browser, any internet browser, to get access to the internal software. So this can be a PC connected via, via cable, but can be also a wireless LAN solution and, and, and tablet PC, for example. Um, so it's a very simple way of, of getting access to the component. Uh, the web interface is already part of the solution of this uh, security panel. So you do, do not need any additional software. Yeah? You need only access via Ethernet, and then you have all the functions for operation, but also for commissioning, for programming. We will see later on. Yeah, yeah let's summarize uh, the key features of this product before we come to some more details. It will be the first European norm and international norm compliant KNX security system on the market. Uh, 
Yeah. So it's not only an ABB internal solution. We have worldwide some standards, and uh, this will be tested according to the standard. Uh, it's already tested, and so the first international standard or European standard compliance solution we have. Supports different languages, yeah? not only German and, and English, but, but more languages are available, as you can see here. Yeah, applicable for low to medium high-risk applications, as already mentioned, uh, up to medium-sized commercial projects, maybe. It's for intrusion alarm detection, of course. That's the main target of the solution. But also technical alarms can be integrated, like smoke and, and heat sensors, gas and water sensors. And also a hold-up alarm can be sent out. So if you have any uh, problem in your building, you expect or you, you feel that something uh, would like to attack you, you can send out, uh, send out also such kind of alarm. Yeah, commissioning, visualization and operation via the web browser, integrated web interface, and of course integration into KNX. That's the target here. Yeah, if we have an Ethernet device and we have a security-related component, of course, it's important to have a secured communication. What do we do here? We work uh, uh, on this SSL level. What does it mean? Secure sockets layer. These are certificates behind which yeah, ensure a safe communication. The same we use, for example, also for, for Internet banking nowadays. So it's state-of-the-art. Uh, let me say secured communication. Of course, login is only possible via username and password additionally. And uh, so this is, let me say, state of the art solution for this communication nowadays. Mm. Yeah, what else do we have for you before we come to the details? We have a special homepage for yeah, this solution. We call it knx-alarm or abb.de for the German or .com for the international uh, market slash knx-alarm. German is already existing. The English one is still under construction but will come very soon. And there you get all the information yeah, around the solution or technical information. Uh, training dates, for example. We will offer also e-learning modules and so on. So we decided to have here a special page. Have a look. Uh, if you are uh, able to read German at the moment, already finished, English comes soon, as mentioned. Yeah, and some more marketing tools we will have. Uh, you see here we have also a video already uh, launched on the, on the YouTube or YouTube channel, Safe and Smart, so called. Yeah, it's a nice, small, let me say, video uh, around the solution. Not very technical, but showing a bit how it works, how it looks like. We have these roll-up posters, for example, here available also. And of course, also uh, some technical brochures will come and partly already available. Yeah, maybe one word uh, regarding the launch of the product. We have launched this product already for the German market or German-speaking market, Austria and Switzerland. Um, English, English documentation is not complete ready at the moment, but will come very soon. So on the international uh, English-speaking markets, let's say, we will inform you on, uh, on time. It will be launched as well, of course. But still takes a bit time and we are just working on this. Yeah, let's come to some more details of the solution. You see here a bigger picture of the uh, component inside. Again, our security panel as a main unit. Two zone modules can be integrated in the battery. Okay, um, regarding yeah, programming or connection, getting connection to the system, um, we have here yeah, the situation that we need a connection via a PC cable or Ethernet cable, first of all. Yeah? So, what do you need? You need a PC with a web browser and uh, yeah, the Ethernet cable connected directly to this device. So, um, what do you do? You have different options. You will see later on via the iBus tool is the easiest way to get connection. But if your PC has an yeah, auto IP configuration for getting connection to the network, yeah, auto IP, auto IP address assessment, uh, yeah, um, and you have auto configuration active as well here, yeah, then um, and your your your, your KNX uh, security panel has also DHCP programmed, then automatically 
your KNX security panel will get in the auto IP range an IP address and can communicate with your uh, your PC. You have to know only the IP address, type it in your in your web browser and then you get a SAS. Uh, could be one solution. Um, if you have programmed a fixed IP address in your PC, then of course the IP address of your KNX security panel needs also yeah, an IP address, a fixed IP address which fits to this segment can be adjusted here as well and then they can communicate as well. No? Later on, of course, in a real project you will integrate the solution also into your local area network which has maybe also uh, DHCP server available standard in all these uh, internet router. So then automatically your KNX security panel gets the right IP address which fits to your system. You can read out maybe in the software of your IP, uh, network router or internet router which address is behind and then you can get access to this as well. So these are all the options but it might be easier to go the following way. At the beginning you take the IBAS tool. Yeah. The IBAS tool is yeah, a tool you know already hopefully. A tool to yeah, get access to different KNX devices for easier programming, for testing and so on. Yeah. We support a lot of components and now we support also IP devices which is in our case also our security panel, our KNX security panel. So what do you do? You start the actual version of the IBAS tool, which is now 1900, the actual version, which supports also IP devices. You click on connect, as you know. You change over to IP devices, which is a firm for, uh, further button in the software right now. And then it automatically searches for connected yeah, KNX IP devices, the IBAS tool. So and it will show you if your security panel is connected also this device directly and if you have a complete look to the screen of the IBAS tool in such a case you see after getting connection clicking on IP devices it shows me here in this example two devices our KNX security panel and also an IP router which is another IP device for KNX of course. You see directly here the IP address ah, MAC address as well and down there some more information but most important is to detect only the device and then you click on this button here open website not more is necessary by doing this you open your um, web browser and you get access to the web interface of the security panel directly and this login screen will appear So, of course, it's, it's uh, password uh, secured. You need a username and a password. So, what do you do at the beginning? You log in as an operator only. As an administrator, which we do later on, is not at the beginning possible. So, first of all, via operator, log in, and then later on, via administrator, log in, we can program everything. So, what do you do? You type in operator as a. Ah, sorry, before you do this, you have to confirm here the terms of use. Click on this. Uh, icon here and then you can read the terms of use nothing special you close this of course and then type in operator both for username and also password and then you click log in here and then you are at the main menu of the device huh? that's what you can do I should do at the beginning so it's I promise you a very simple way to get access at the beginning you don't ha have to take care of your IP network your IBAS tool is really really simplified. Yeah, what do you have here? We have six main buttons here, six main functions behind. Yeah, Some additional uh, icons here I'll explain. So what can we do with our integrated web server, uh, web server software? We can operate and display. I will show you a bit. We can look into the history, what happened in the past with the system. Yeah. We can manage our users, different users with different rights are normally uh, available. If we have this safe key solution, remember one of the first slides, this uh, yeah, safe key uh, setting device with the option to, to insert a key or to type in a code, um, this has to be managed as well. Yeah. Programming will be shown by Jürgen later on and there's a small other function behind service, I will come to this later. Furthermore you have some, some status information here 
if there's an alarm or any fault in the system will be symbolized here if there's any telephone combination down there as well and date and time will be shown exit here possible out of the system and assess or log in via or as an administrator has to be done with this button so normally after logging in as an operator you go here because you need all the rights which has only the administrator at the beginning you click here on this button and then log in screen appears again you type in administrator and also for password administrator and then you are again at the main menu but with all rights with all options to, do, to take some action to do something okay let's go to the first main function operation and display if you click on this you get an easy overview of all possible five areas you might have programmed or might have existing um, this is situation is it set or unset you see it here is there any alarm any fault not more an overview of all five areas what is an area Jürgen will come to this also a bit later in a small example in principle an independent part of your building which has to be secured could be in a villa a separate apartment and the main building two independent units with independent entrances and you would like to secure them independently this would be another area so you can go up to five areas if you click here on one area you get some more detailed information about the area so area one it's the main building status at the moment unset that's very important to know is it set or unset so what can you do with these 10 buttons here you can if it's set you can unset here as well you can set internally or externally internally if you're at home externally if you leave completely the house if an alarm is active you can switch off the siren you can also reset you can see is there any zone open any any uh, zone triggered any window open whatever you can disable also groups for example you would like to disable certain windows at a certain time not working in, within the security security solution also possible walk test is more for commissioning let's say for testing is um, or how big is the range or the detection range of a motion detector can be indicated by an LED at a motion detector and you start this walk test here and then you see with an LED okay the whole room will be uh, covered if you use a safety solution with these electronic keys or with a keypad um, and you would like to disable the solution or the uh, keys the easy way you can do it directly here for example if you if one of your family have lost the key and you would like to disable this key immediately okay, you can do it right now here and temporary set if um, possible you can also reset um, yeah if there's something wrong in the system itself you have repaired this any fault in the installation or whatever then you need a temporary set yeah down there three buttons we can directly send out an alarm a fire alarm emergency or panic alarm huh? via your system yeah. by pressing this button um, it will be sent out immediately and this environment here could be also displayed on your iPad on your tablet PC yeah? so directly for the user and he can take some action immediately good yeah let's have a small example yeah if the system was set you see here also external set as an actual status yeah it's a, it's a headline here you could unset again this is active now but now it's external set and of course if a real alarm appears in this case external set plus window will be opened you see also here uh, alarm message directly on the screen of course then you can unset the system directly if something like this appears yeah. alarm will be also stored here with this red icon down there okay there was an alarm so I have switched off or unset the system so it will be stored here yeah, you can switch off the siren if it was active for sure yeah and if you click on this here you see also which kind of alarm appeared the next page it shows you okay at that time it was an intrusion alarm in area one with some more information on the lower left side you see magnetic read contact window kitchen was the the triggered sensor so also in case of any any action hopefully not happening but uh, it might happen then you have here also more information 
yeah, what do you do practically? You switch, uh, you unset uh, the system, and then you can reset here also. So all the things you have to do, such a case can be done here. Good, so operation display, simple and user oriented. Uh, you need nothing else but a web browser and then you have assess, no problem. Yeah, some further information, history. What's about the history of the system? We have two logs, data logs, event log and assess log. Event log, let's have a look. Is all what happened uh, in the past concerning any security relevant actions. So mainly setting and setting will be shown here at which time, at which date. Yeah. Maybe also here uh, somebody logged in and logged out in the panel. Yeah, something like this also it was in programming mode here, the panel. So things which are really uh, interesting or security relevant. And you see it's, it's numbered here, 887. It will be continuously numbered here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the alarms or the, the alarms, the, the um, uh, status information and um, yeah, shown to you what happened also in the past. Assess lock has to do with the safe key solutions, electronic key or keypad, if you would like to use this. This has to do with setting as well, but also with getting access to the building very often. Yeah, so that you open the door uh, by means of this solution. So we would like to lock also who got access in the past to the building, to the secured project. Yeah? And you see here, similar situation, a list with date and time for each event, assess this key <coughs> or code number one, whatever it means, we come to this and this is assigned to this person here. Uh, and so on for each of these uh, yeah, events we have a log. Jürgen, just help me how many? Uh, 1,000. 1,000 um, events will be stored for the assess log. And 10,000 will be stored for the event log we have seen before. Yeah. So more than enough. If you say, okay, maybe it's not enough for me, what can you do? You can also store the data. You press on this button here, disk button. And then you can store this data, both for the event log and also the assess log, in an Excel, yeah, as an Excel file, in an Excel sheet. And can save it anywhere so it's not lost also from uh, the former past, the actions. Okay. Yeah, user management. So if you have a secured building, not only one person has normally access uh, to the system or is allowed to set and unset. Um, we have to, to administrate these users. We can do this here. So what do you do? First of all, the administrator, operator and user is already active here at the beginning. So this is uh, the three yeah, standard users at the beginning. Administrator can do everything. But you can add, of course, new and further users with real names behind. Uh, no problem, you add a new user here. And then, of course, you can parameterize this. So, a user, a new one, gets a name. You can adjust the language, you give the, the data of this person, email, phone, mobile. Yeah? Because if anything happens, you can also send a message to this person. Yeah, whatever you want, case of thought or alarm or any message, you can send different ways and different ways and information. Yeah, and the user rights can be programmed here. Okay, administrator for example has all the rights. If you say okay, it's only a user, then you allow him only to, yeah, to to operate and uh, uh, to set and unset the system, but not to program and not to to manage the the safe key solution and so on. Yeah, and of course which area. This, uh, this guy or this person can uh, handle shall be can be adjusted here. Okay. Furthermore, you add such a user to a user group. Yeah? Each user belongs to a user group, and if you click on the user group, you have then you have assigned the, uh, the user. You can give further rights to the person. What is allowed regarding setting and unsetting or resetting of the system? Is this person allowed to look into the history, for example? Yeah? It's also something you can adjust here. So for each user, individual uh, situations are available. Key management, if you use the safe key solution, safe key setting device, um, then you have your further options. First of all, you see here on the left, safe key 
setting device, for example, two options to yeah, take some action from this device via a programmable key or via a code on this keypad. Huh? So what do you do? You have to teach in, first of all, either a key or a code in order that, that, that the system knows, okay, this is key and this code, uh, you can take some action here. So you press the teach in button here. Then the system waits for any action at the safe key setting device. Using a key means you insert the key in the slot here. And then it's teached in or you type in your code. Huh? Six numbers are necessary. And then it will be shown here. Keys and codes detected. You see key one is detected, code two is detected, key number three is detected. Huh? Very simple way to teach in. Uh, this solution. Yeah, and then if you have teached in either the code or the key, and up to eight of these safe key setting devices can be installed in such a solution. So maybe eight different doors, yeah, uh, eight different locations where you would like to, to have this solution. And then you say, okay, with this key, key number one, I allow at safe key setting device number one, main entrance in this case, area one, setting or unsetting, inclusive getting access to the building. That's the allowance or the, the permission for this, um, yeah, in this case, key. Huh? You still have different options, up to no rights, maybe. You're not allowed to get access at the main entrance with this key, then you say no rights, for example. Huh? Some other doors might be possible for this person or this key. For the code, you have some more options. Not more, one more option, let's say, but the same principle. You assign the code you have teached in to any of your eight uh, safe key setting devices. There's one more option, hold up alarm inclusive unset. Yeah? What does it mean? Maybe such a setting device is next to your main entrance. You would like to enter your building, but um, a criminal person ca uh, is approaching to you and forces you to open uh, his house or your house. So he would like to enter with you, your building. What can you do? You can type in your special code, which sends a hold, hold up alarm to a security company, to any person. Of course, the system will also unset. You can enter with this person, uh, uh, the building. So, But a quiet alarm will be sent out, in such a case, to anybody. So an additional option here with the code. You see, it's a very flexible and powerful solution we have here. There's a lot of options. Yeah, to, to have a great solution finally. So, finally, from my side, service, not much. The service button, if you click on this, it's mainly, yeah, the company name and address behind. You can see directly, okay, how to contact, contact your service company, your system integrator, your security company, whatever you have. If you type in here a service date, the next service date for your system, it will be shown also on your display, on your keypad display. If it's next to this date. Uh, to remind you, okay, I should call my, my service company to take some action. Uh, later on we will have also a further function here that um, the company who installed and programmed everything can test all your sensors, all your actions and all, yeah, all this data will be locked here and shown here, okay, window contact, kitchen was, uh, was tested, door contact, main entrance was tested and so on. So it's a kind of handover protocol then later on to you as a customer. Good, so I will stop here and hand over to Jürgen. Jürgen will go in some more details, more details of the programming uh, of the solution. Uh, so let's have a look together. Hello and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I'm continuing this webinar. I would like to show you the so-called programming menu, what you can do, how you can add more modules, how you can configure all the zones and so on. Um, I don't really like the word programming. <laughs> we do nearly the same like in the ETS. We set the parameters yeah, and we allow us or we disable or enable some things, but in reality we don't program. So let me start here with this menu. At first we want we must have uh, the user rights yeah, to go into the programming menu. Now we are logged in as an administrator yeah, and the administrator now has as a default the allowance to go to the programming menu. So 
Now when we enter this menu, we have here our tree on the left side. So we start with the first the first point here, the so-called system settings. So in the window general, we can at first write here a name of our um, security panel, uh, the name of the family or the owner. And later when you start the iBus tool, you can see exactly this name here is also shown inside the iBus tool. So with some buttons here about the system configuration, we can export our, our uh, configuration of the security panel. After we have set all the parameters and everything is okay, then we can export it is maybe on a hard disk and store it on a network attached storage or somewhere on a flash drive. The same way we can import a configuration yeah, here with this button or we can also restore the factory settings. Yeah, then we have the same settings, same parameterization, like this panel leaves our factory. And via this button, restart panel, we can make uh, a kind of start. It's like you disconnect the main supply and connect the main supplies again, a kind of uh, soft start, for example. With this function here, export KNX configuration, we can make, uh, we can uh, create an export file and import this file in the ETS. That's a very nice feature and I would like to show you these steps uh, at the end of my presentation. We have this button, update firmware. We can update our firmware of the security panel. During this firmware update, the parameterization will not be deleted. So only the firmware is updated. So after an update, you have still the same parameterization like before. It is also possible to update for uh, the KNX firmware in the bus couple unit by using here this button. In the next window, language, we can uh, make some uh, settings of the language. This is the language, default language of our user interface. So when you start your browser, you type in the IP address of the security panel, yeah, then you get the login window. Yeah? And now you got the login window here, depending on this language, like now English. Yeah? And here we can set uh, the language of our uh, uh, voice uh, voice dialing machine, for example, to send alarm messages via the telephone uh, feature, which is also inside. So, the panel uh, will be delivered with two languages, uh, German and English. When you want to have more languages, like Italian, Spanish and so on, then you go to our website, download language packages, copy these language packages on an SD card and insert the SD card in our security panel and then via this button we can import from this inserted SD card more language packages. So we are the menu time and date. We can set here the time and date of our intrusion alarm panel manually or for example automatically yeah. and also for example if you want to uh, send also this time and date to KNX is also possible. So we are the uh, button here encryption we can import or we can create our own SSL certificates. As a default, we communicate via the port 80 <coughs> uh, by using the standard browser functionality for a higher level of security, security on the IP network. Yeah, we can create here our own certificates and then we use the SSL principle or the SSL uh, uh, communication like for example for online banking and so on. <coughs> So the next uh, next point here we have the communication settings, yeah, the default settings like a standard IP device. If you use the fixed IP address or auto IP address when we have a DHCP server, yeah, and yeah, you see here default the port 80 yeah, or SSL we use the port 443. Yeah, in the next menu we can set the settings for our modem. Yeah, when you tick here and enable the telephone modem, yeah, then you can select your country and you get your country specific parameters here. For example, yeah, the time to the first ring and so on. <coughs> Additional information, for example here, or possibilities to tick yeah, when it's used on a PBEX, for example, or when you need, uh, when a device should not wait for a dial tone, you can tick it. So this depends maybe on your hardware, what is behind our security panel. <coughs> the email parameters, like a standard email um, account, the username, your password, the SMTP server, for example, yeah, because the security panel is able to send also emails in case of an alarm, for example, or daily routine or other things. So here we can uh, set the parameter for uh, SMS. <coughs> 
mm, it's only possible, for example, when your country supports this SMS functionality. Here in Germany, we have the service called SMS Anyway or the TMT Mobile, yeah, and then we can send here via our landline phone number messages to this provider, and then he send SMS mes messages, for example, to your mobile phone. So we are the next parameter areas. <coughs> We do the settings of our maximum five areas. So here our security panel can ha or has inside the alarm logic to handle up to five different areas. Uh, you can write here the name of your area. For example, my area one is my main building, my area two, maybe my apartment or so on. And you can tick here and then the security panel sends also the messages, at first the status messages to the KNX depending on your areas. <clears throat> so here in the menu dependencies we can make for example depending areas like for example we have here one building it consists of up to three areas here maybe this is inside the building our PC or our server room yeah here we have yeah, the, some some other rooms and here the door to our area 3 and here we can enter or leave our building and via dependencies we can say okay when we want to set here our our area number three at first area number one must be set and then area number two and then it's possible to set area number three that's what we can do here so we have to tick here yeah, that area two depends on area one when we tick it here then we at first have to set area one and then it's possible to set area number two uh, and so on what is new ins inside our alarm logic of the security module is the so-called force setting. This was not possible with the former system, our L240, but here we can do it. So the same, for example, building here, our three areas, and now we are force setting. We can go here out, uh, we can go to our area three, and when we set here area three, we can set area three, area two, and area one in one step. Yeah. In this case, we have to tick here, 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 and then it's not necessary before to set here, afterwards here and here. By setting area number three, other areas, the first and, and the second one, yeah, are also set too. It's also a new principle yeah, here in the security panel. And the same, vice versa, for unsetting, when our three areas are here set, yeah, and we come here inside our building, we unset the system, by unsetting area number three, it is also possible to unset area two and, un and unset also area one. Yeah, so we have also to tick here the, four, uh, the correct uh, buttons at the forced unsetting. So then let's go to the system components. So now we have here our new system. Yeah, so we have here uh, learned in or added no, no devices. That's why you can see no zone modules, no bus motion detectors, no safe key, no KNX, nothing. Everything here is not used. So the first step is uh, to do the settings of the panel. Uh, the panel we have here eight circuits or eight zones on board. We have four relays and we have some other status messages here. So let me start to uh, parameterize the first eight inputs. You see here the input number one up to input number eight. But at the beginning, everything is disabled. That's one of the principles of this security panel. Yeah, it is not reconfigured. Yeah, everything is disabled. So the first step is to tick here and to enable our first input. So you will see here the ID of this input. Yeah, the first means P, this is the panel, and this is my input number one. This is a unique ID of each of our 344 zones. Yeah, it is assigned to area number one because the eight inputs which are on board belongs all to my area number one. <coughs> So, the next possibility is to write here a text. The text is limited to 40 characters. Why? Because we want to send also this text yeah, via 14 byte telegram into our KNX world. The KNX uh, telegram length is limited to 14 characters. That's why we have here the same limitation. So, for example, when the system is set, and someone opens here this window kitchen, then we have our intrusion alarm, the siren, strobe, and so on. And also this text here is transmitted to KNX, yeah? and on our, on our um, touch panel, for example, our comfort touch, we can see here these 14 characters. 
Additionally, the name of the communication object later will change here in from so number one into window kitchen. So it's also a new feature that it's possible to change the uh, or to rename the name here of a group object inside the ETS. So then we have to specify the function of this input number one. If it's a window contact, glass break detector, motion detector, or a technical sensor, or for example, is this an input for a setting unsetting device? Uh, this is what we can specify here, the function. And how the line is monitored via a default end of line resistor, about 2700 2, 2, ohms. Or do we have a special magnetic read contact, including a tamper detection, or we have a normal, uh, normal, normally closed contact? This is possible via this parameter here. So the alarm behavior of this input, it is used as a, stand, as a standard normal alarm behavior. So when the system is set, someone opens the window, then we get our alarm. Or should, for example, this input start a kind of pre-alarm? Yeah, and so a uh, pre-alarm time is running and if a second input makes an alarm, uh, will be triggered, then the alarm happens. So we need two sensors which must make an alarm when we use the pre-alarm functionality. Or is it an entry contact, last door contact or access contact? So this type we need for the delayed setting. So when we set and unset our system, not via safe key, we use our keypad, for example, which is inside a building or when we want to set a system via KNX, then we can use the delayed setting. Yeah? And then we need special kind of delayed sensors, maybe the door contact yeah? or the motion detector in the entrance area. That's why we have to use here these three type of, of uh, alarm behaviors. And um, uh, should a sensor make an alarm when we are unset, yeah? then we have to tick here. Uh, default not, so we can open and close the window and you get no alarm. Yeah, but when the system is internal set, then it should make an internal alarm and, of course, when the system is set here, an external alarm. Uh, this is a standard setting and it is also possible to assign this input to a disabled group. So we have maximum 20 disabled groups that are available yeah, and then we can say, okay, this input number one belongs into my disabled group four. So later we can activate our disable group 4 and then this sensor, this input now is not inside alarm logic. This is for example in the summertime when you want uh, to open your window and you want to set a system, then you can for example activate a disable group and all maybe your windows in the second floor are not activated. So here we can send the status to KNX. So when you tick here, then we s then he send as a one-bit information the logical one, window is open, yeah, or the logical zero, window is closed. This is the real-time message. Maybe to assign this group address to your room thermostat yeah, to switch off your heating or cooling system. So we have here another parameter which is called alarm memory. So now when you tick it here and the system is set and this input makes an alarm, we have the logical one on, on the bus, but when you close the window, the value is still one on the bus. So you can see on your KNX visualization or your, your KNX uh, comfort touch, which sensor made this alarm. Yeah, and after you answer the system and make a reset, this value goes back to zero. Additionally here, the, the name or the number of the ETS communication object 200. And eight, for example. So um, we have also eight, uh, sorry, four relays on board. So these four relays, three relays are also free programmable, programmable. So when you want to program a relay, so tick here and enable uh, the relay, and you can set here maybe one of the state when the relay should switch, internal set for example, your delay time is active or during internal warning or system fault, like for example battery failure or something, yeah. and if you want to invert the output or the relay should flash, so all these are here the standard settings of one of these four outputs. Okay, so far uh, then we have, to, we have done all the settings of our eight inputs and four relay outputs. Afterwards we have to activate here our inputs. Yeah? And then the, the inputs and the outputs, for example, yeah, they are working. So never forget here to activate your different inputs. When you want to change the settings of an input, 
first you have to deactivate it and then you can go back to an input and do changes afterwards you have to activate it again now when a zone is activated and you open for example here the window then you see here also the live status okay the window is closed or triggered yeah when the window here is open so you really you can test your connected sensor if everything here is wired and the end of line resistor is okay so then let's add some more components to our security bus for example we can connect up to 32 so-called zone modules we can install two of the zone modules inside the security panel in the housing yeah, but maximum we can connect up to 32 of these zone modules the easiest way is to start here the so-called scan mode so click on the button scan mode and the security panel scans the security bus yeah, and finds for example here one of the secure of the zone modules with the address one the address depends here on the position of your deep switches this is here for example your address switch so he find he found one of these modules yeah, okay and then we can do the settings of these modules the module will appear here you see the name it's a fourfold zone module as it's a new device not deactivated yeah, because uh, it is still deactivated because at first we have to do the settings so click here on the module yeah, you can write here name maybe where the module is installed the floor or the room for example yeah, and then we start here with our four inputs and we have also here three outputs on the module these are now electronic these are electronic outputs yeah, no relay outputs and the principle is still the same go to input number one enable the input number one yeah, and do the same settings like before uh, like one of the zones which are on board of the panel you see here the name this is MGT this means our is our zone module with the address number one and the first input this is also unique ID this input here belongs to the first zone module with the address one and the first zone you can type here also the text of the zone yeah, and the same the input function and the line resistor the same principle like before in the zone of our panel so next step let's add some key, uh, some uh, bus motion detectors <coughs> so we have four types of bus motion detectors uh, infrared motion detectors and two dual motion detectors they have all the same the same housing they look like the same how to now how to add these motion detectors the easiest way is uh, to go here to the mode start teaching mode click here on this button yeah and then we have to go to our sensor uh, to our bus motion detector open the housing and close the housing by closing the by closing the housing yeah the temper contact will be will be pressed down and this is now um, the step to to teach in the motion detector and now when we have closed the housing uh, the panel finds here oh you are the, the new motion detector and you get automatically the address number one later you can change the address if you want yeah or you can add here for example manually the motion detectors but this is the easiest way yeah, to teach here automatically the motion detectors yeah. after we have teached in one of this motion detector you can see here with the address number one the type it's an infrared motion detector yeah, for the class c for the highest security level is still deactivated because we want to do the settings click here on the motion detector write the name or the room where the motion detector is installed and with the next window here parameters you can give here also the settings uh, for example the type again of the uh, detector the alarm behavior pre-alarm yeah, such things are possible or it's a uh, access motion detector or something else plus special parameters which belongs here to our motion detector yeah, for example to use the alarm memory LED or the anti-mask and such things so these are the specific parameters of our infrared motion detector so the next module is our safe key solution now for example we are the safe key uh, module we can do the direct setting so this safe key module uh, is installed inside nearby the door so we can connect here the magnetic read contact yeah the door lock contact and our arming device which is installed outside the building and via key or via code we can set and unset the system 
the same principle. The easiest way is to start here the scan mode, press on the button and then the panel scans the bus and he finds the module with the address number one which depends on the setting here of this uh, tip switch yeah, and, and he find, found this device, okay, save kill module with the address number one and next step is we can also do the settings of this module click here on the save key module with the address number one right here maybe the name where it's installed entrance area or your uh, entrance door on the cellar or something for example and go to the next menu general here we can do some specific parameters how we want to unset our system at this door yeah. do we need a key or a code yeah. or do we need minimum a key so via code it is not possible to unset the system or do we need both for unsetting at first the code yeah, and then between six seconds we need a key so this is for the highest risk to have two things a key and a code to set a system you can use still a key or a code this is not very important yeah, but it's very uh, important how to unset the system so you can decide it here per each door and for example what would you like to do external setting or also or only internal setting so with the next uh, input number one yeah, we can do the settings of our magnetic read contact so we have to monitor if the door for example is open or closed that's why we need a magnetic read contact yeah, and here we can do the settings of this magnetic read contact and our input number two is uh, pre-configured for our uh, lock contact a lock contact is ne necessary to monitor now if the door is locked or unlocked and here we have the parameters yeah, for this lock contact so and our so-called keypads have also to teach in yeah, the first easy mode is here to press the button scan mode yeah, and then the security pedals, uh, panel still scans the panel bus and now he finds one maximum five keypads yeah, this one has the address number one and then he shows you the keypad number one with the address number one and let's go here to the next step to configure the keypad you see he has found one it is still deactivated yeah? and now it's deactivated we can do all the settings the name where the keypad is installed yeah? and the area it belongs to area 1 or area 5 and some specific parameter for example about the language so now when you go to the keypad you will see default here the English language or maybe it's in your it's in Italy then you can say okay the default language here is Italian and then when you log in with your pin then it changed to your user language but this is here the default language so and for example we have here some so-called functions key function keys one is the switching off button this is here uh, switching off the siren button this is here this one uh, so now when you have internal alarm water alarm or something you can press here this button to switch off your bother yeah, the bother which is inside our keypad and for example if you want also your signaling devices your internal siren or the external siren yeah, the next button is the so-called setting button uh, this is this one here with the uh, possibility to set the system internally externally or to start a delayed externally setting now for example when the keypad the keypad is installed inside a building yeah, and on this keypad you can press here yeah, and then the, the delay time starts you can leave the building and after the fixed time or with closing the door your system goes delayed external set yeah. and when you do this one you need here an unsetting button you come at home open the door trigger your alarm time you have to go to the keypad and unset the system the next button is the so-called reset button yeah, the reset yeah, is the default fun uh, is necessary after an alarm technical alarm or intrusion alarm and as an administrator you also allowed to do so-called a temper reset yeah, and you can do it here also on this keypad Additionally, we have so-called multifunction keys here. They are also pre-configured, but we, but we can uh, reconfigure it, for example, for fire alarm, or you can use it also for external setting or for internal setting, like you want. 
And all these uh, keys you can do with, uh, the functionalities without or with a PIN code. So it depends here what you have ticked. Is it necessary to enter a PIN and then answer the system or you can do it here with or without doing, uh, with entering a PIN. So, and we want to have also KNX zones. Maximum we can have 128 zones, which comes from our KNX world via security terminals, for example. Yeah, and though we have to activate here yeah, some KNX zones. So, let's do it. Click on the button, add new KNX inputs. How many you want to have? Maximum we have 128. We can here star, uh, start with an address. Okay, I want to start with address number one and click on the button number one. Then we get here 10 KNX inputs. Start with the address number one. And they are all still deactivated. Yeah, we have to do the same step. Click on one KNX zone, number one, for example. Write here a name. And now this name is also, yeah, for example, later imported into the ETS. And you see the name of the communication object of KNX zone number one changes here also to this text here, window washroom. It really helps you during commissioning in the ETS to assign the correct group address to this object. So with the parameters, you can do the same, like input in our zone module or the panel, yeah, the input function, magnetic read contact, or the technical sensor, motion detector. You see here the unique ID. This is a KNX zone, yeah, the first one, KNX slash slash one, yeah, and the other parameters like before. So after we have add all our components, we have uh, set all the parameters of our inputs. Yeah, we go here to the main menu, System Components, and we, t we press here the button Activate all the components. Yeah, and then our system is OK, and all our modules are still now working. Yeah, our zone module, the bus motion detectors, the keypads, and so on, is now ready to work. When you want to change something, go to the System Component, deactivate the component, do the changes, yeah, and activate the module later again. So, additionally, we have our maximum 20 disable groups. Yeah, on this, on via the keypad or the web UI, you can activate or deactivate your disable groups. Yeah, this is here. You can do the settings of a disable group. For example, disable group number four. Yeah, then you see here which uh, of our 344 circuits now assigned to the disable group. Yeah, and via the menu but uh, via the menu parameters you can write here also a name to this disable group for example summertime and now later when you go to the keypad and and activate your disable group number four all these zones which are assigned here to your disable group four are out of work the status goes still to KNX, but it's not inside the alarm logic so in the next menu we have the parameters for alarming the general alarming parameters, for example, like we have here, um, for example, is the monitoring active of our external signaling device, the, our siren, strobe light. These devices are installed outside the building, yeah, which are monitored via an end of line resistor. And when you have connect your siren, so you can tick it, and then the cable, yeah, your cores to the siren are still here monitored. Or the case timbre case timbre yeah, of our security mod, uh, security uh, panel and so on. Yeah, or the siren, yeah, the, the activation time, which is limited to 180 seconds. You can reduce it here, for example, or our pre-alarm time yeah, and so on. Or it's possible to trigger a fire alarm via the web interface. So here, these are all the standard parameters for alarming. So here in the menu unset, we can do the alarm matrix or the behavior when the system is unset. So for example, the system is unset yeah, and we have a fire alarm. Yeah, what should happen? The internal warning, which means the, uh, the butter in, this, in the panel and the keypad goes on, our internal siren goes on, but outside we have no alarming, no siren, and we have here a remote alarm to our alarm receiving company or for example to our mobile phone to our users. Yeah, and here we have the same, but only for the situation internal set, so when the system is internally set, and for externally set. Externally set, and someone opens a window, then, for example, our internal warning is active, so the buzzer and the keypad goes on, 
and outside our siren, a strobe light starts, makes noise and flashes and the remote alarming to our alarm receiving company is active. So we can change the behavior like you want, you are absolutely free, you have all the possibilities. So, in the menu settings, we can uh, change here the time, for example, of the period for our information setting confirmation, maybe for our relay, we can program one of our four relays for setting confirmation, and then when the system goes set, the relay closes here about three seconds, or for unsetting confirmation or error during setting. So we have also the status sent on KNX yeah, and maybe to switch on the light when the uh, setting was not successful. Or the setting delay time, this is when we use the delayed setting. We go to the keypad, start here the delay time, so we leave the building and after 60 seconds, 60 seconds the system goes external set. Yeah, and the same we come back, open the door, the alarm time is now triggered and between the 60 seconds we have to answer the system. If not, then we get our alarm outside. Now let's go to, I think, one of the interesting topics about KNIX. First parameter here is, yeah, do we have KNIX? Do we want to send information? Yes or no? The default is no communication, but now we want to have communication to KNIX, so we can use the interface in one direction, a so-called unidirectional uh, mode. It means we send only information from the security panel into the KNIX world like the status of our uh, complete zones per area, our alarms, yeah, internal alarm, external alarm, yeah, all these status messages, also 14 byte text messages are possible and we can call scenes. But we cannot evaluate information which comes from KNIX, so it's only one direction, send everything into the KNIX world. When we want to have communication both direction, we have to choose this mode here and then we can also set and unset a system via KNX. Yeah, or we can make a reset via KNX. We can send up to 128 KNX zones inputs via KNX and also monitor it cyclically if you want. So the first mode is here, the unidirectional, to send only information into the KNX world. Yeah, for example, also to send uh, the time and date is possible, but we cannot monitor if KNX is still okay. That's why you have no possibility to change it here, because KNX is not monitored in this mode. We can activate our 14 byte messages and then we can send the name of a sensor which made an alarm and so on here into the KNX. The language of these text messages, English, German, or when you have imported other uh, language packages, maybe also in Italian and so on. So, to send information into the K, uh, from KNX into the security panel, we have to change here the mode to bidirectional. Yeah, then we have the same parameters plus some more, for example. Here now we can evaluate if the KNX bus voltage is still okay or what should happen when we have KNX bus voltage failure. To have uh, here a, a message which is like a fault in our security panel or also we get here a temper alarm. So, it depends on your requirements. Yeah, and if it's also possible to set or unset externally the security panel via KNX or to make a reset and also to make a tamper reset via KNX. Yeah, when we evaluate our uh, 128 uh, KNX zones, we can also here uh, set a time for the cyclical monitoring. It's also possible. So we can also call scenes, yeah, our typical 8-bit scenes like you know it from our KNX actuators. Yeah, here we can set for the external setting called C number 7, internal setting C number 18. So depending here on our possibilities we can call up to our 64 different scenes. So but how to get all these parameters into the ETS? So this is a new step, new principle. It is not possible to download all these settings uh, via the web user interface. The KNX Association uh, has specified the ETS as the only software to download a KNX device. So we have to do uh, two steps. At first we have to export via the web user interface in the programming mode all this information in a file which is ends with a bin. Uh, start the ETS and inside the ETS we have to import here this file and then we have all the parameters and all the communication objects available. 
So now I'd like to show you how to do it. So um, start the ETS, create a new project, add your KNX device, and the first time when you add a, uh, the, uh, the security panel as a new device, then the plug-in software is installed automatically. So you get here a new pop-up window uh, to install here the plug-in software, say next and allow it and say OK. And then this plug-in software is installed. It's only necessary at the first time. Good, so now how to export all these data? When we have activated all our components, we have done all the settings, everything is finished. We go here to our menu, system settings, Click here on this button, Export KNX Configuration. Then a new uh, then the panel creates here this uh, export file. You have to wait some seconds. Then a new window pops, pops up and you can open the file or in this case it makes sense to save this file. So please select here the button Save yeah, and save this file somewhere on your hard disk, for example, in the download folder. Yeah, it makes sense. Here your default download folder. So. Go to the ETS, create a project, import or add here your uh, ETS application of the security panel and you will see here in the parameters, pff, there are only some parameters yeah, about the in-operation device date, you want to send it to KNX, yes or no, but no more parameters. Yeah? And when you, when you click here on the group objects, you can see we have maximum one group object, which is here the in-operation. No more parameters, no more group objects. So then we click here on our uh, device, right mouse click, then here this menu pops up. We have here the plug-in, uh, which have you installed before. Then click here on the button Import Alarm Panel Configuration and select the folder. And now you can find here your exported file. Click on the button OK. Uh, and then we have imported uh, the configuration and we have all our all our yeah, group objectives here now and you can add here your group addresses like in a standard KNX device. <coughs> so for example we have here all the parameters about the setting, yeah, internal setting area 1, external setting area 1. So now when you send here telegram via KNX with the value 1, the system goes internal set. With a 0 it goes unset. Yeah, or here for example the status messages the panel of area number one is internal set, external set, ready to set, yeah, or the alarm time is active, and so on. So all here, these are the status messages which belongs to the setting. Yeah. And when you go down, you have all the status objects here for the alarming. Yeah. When we have, for example, panic alarm, then we have the, the value one, or technical alarm, or fault, or the strobe, the siren. So all these are one-bit communication objects. <clears throat> and we can send also text messages into the KNX world. So for example here we have two objects, which is message 1, part 1, part 2. And here we have 14 characters, which are kind of plain text. It gives you here the text, is it intrusion, timbre or panic. And in the second message object we have more details. Yeah? For example, uh, the name of the sensor, which made an alarm, or more informations here. Via this button, via this object, up and down, via zero or one, yeah, we can go back or forwards for this more when we have more messages. With this object, triggered detected sensors in area number one, we see all open windows, for example, in our area number one. So here we really see the 14 byte character name, yeah, the text of the sensors. And via one bit, we can also go backward or forwards in the list of our triggered sensors. So here we have the overview about our 20 disabled groups. We are the logical one we can activate or with the zero we can deactivate our disabled groups. Here we have the status of the disabled groups. Uh, and when you remember our disabled group, uh, when you write here name, group number four, it's my disabled group during the summertime. Uh, you see here also the name of this group object has also changed during this import. So the time and date. Uh, of our security panel, and we have here also a new, f a new, a new, f uh, new thing. Yeah, when you go back to our zone input number one, we have written here the name Window Kitchen, and you can see the name of this option has also changed to Window Kitchen. Yeah, there's also a new feature here inside the ETS to change here the name of an object. Yeah. 
Or here, for example, is my KNIC zone. I have written here name, you are the window, and my washing room. You see here the same, the name has changed of the communication object. So it's easy here for you to assign here the correct group address. So, but very important, when you do, when you go back to the web interface in the programming menu and you change again, here one parameter, export the file, start the ETS, import again the file to update all your, param uh, all your parameters. The group addresses and so on will not delete it, only to update all the parameters. It's a very important step yeah, you have to do. And of course, we still provide the product data of the security panel for ETS 3, 4 and 5. Good, so far the steps how to program or I prefer to say parameterize the security panel and the ETS. Some words about training. We will also offer training trainings next year here of course in Heidelberg for you for different countries. And uh, we want to do also the trainings in the countries, but today I cannot give you the training dates. Um, the colleagues from the IMS uh, will send you the training details maybe soon, the next, the next, the next weeks. We have still uh, some training cases like here. Yeah, here we have the security panel, we have our eight, eight inputs, we have the outputs, the siren, a safe key module, and via cables we can connect here our keypad, a bus motion detector, and our safe key arming device. So here the outputs or the connection to KNX, so we can do also here the training for this panel. So please wait until you receive here more information about this training. So our next webinar 2050 will be in German. So now this year we have given a lot of trainings in English language, uh, but for some uh, customers in Austria and Switzerland, they want also to attend a uh, training, a webinar about the security uh, panel. That's why we start on Wednesday the 14th uh, with the webinar like this one in the German language. Uh, so only in German, uh, not in English. Maybe the content will still will be still the same. For you in German and in English spoken countries we will continue with our webinars of course in 2015 with new devices, new topics, maybe also webinar again with the security panel, more details. But on the, the first one will be on the 18th of February with our new devices um, which we will launch at the beginning of January and this will be our new weather sensor like this one here. Yeah. Together, he works together with the weather unit. We will launch also a new weather station and a new analog input. So on these four devices will be the topic uh, of the next webinar on the 18th of February. So uh, we will still send you the invitation timely so you can subscribe like before, but still uh, remember here the date, the 18th of February. Thorsten and me, we would like to say thank you for participating in our webinars in 2040 and um, we are looking forward to welcome you again the next year, 2015. Together we wish you a Merry Christmas, uh, health and success in the new year 2050 and here no intruder like this, for this, like this guy here. Yeah. Thorsten? Yeah, also thank you for this nice webinars this year together with you. I'm looking forward to to uh, do the next webinars next year, of course, and we we will continue this process together with you. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Ciao.